Welcome back to another review on the hit series and much beloved Marvel show Agatha All Along. Will these episodes be great? Most likely not because the previous two and most of WandaVision wasn't either, as well as the fact that I've read Twitter spoilers and I already know that these things are going to get much, much worse. The group arrives at the Witch's Road, where Goth Kid continues to annoy the fuck out of me with his cringy rose-tinted glasses view of the world. Seriously, I get that being part of the Coven is part of his dream or whatever, but the fact that he seemingly can't see that all of these witches despise each other just makes me infuriated with him. The group goes on about how screwed they are, especially now that one of the witches is instead Mrs. Davies, meaning they are down manpower both in completing the road and fighting off the Salem Seven. And then, for some reason, the rest of the Coven seems confused when Alice tells them that they'll be facing trials and that these trials will be their worst nightmares. It's been very clear throughout the previous episode that these witches know they'll be facing trials, but here when Alice mentions it, they just seem confused. When Alice shouldn't really be telling them this, especially as Agatha has told them and she's been on the road before. Agatha explains that all of the witches will have to pass a trial based on one of the witches, and that the Coven is freaked out when Goth Kid tries to explain who he is and the weird distortion is there, with them explaining that a sigil has been placed on him by another witch. And then Mrs. Davies just teleports out the scene. It's supposed to be one of those, oh she wandered off, where could she have gone moments, but we never see her go back down the road she came from and the only way she could have progressed down the road is by wandering past Agatha and Goth Kid, which she obviously doesn't do. So yeah, the script just literally teleports her to the next scene. As Mrs. Davies wanders in the swamp, she is nearly swallowed by it, being saved by Alice. The group then sees a summer house in the distance and walks towards it, and when the group enters, they find themselves trapped inside and their outfits change, with a riddle being their only clue to beating the trial. The group decides to drink a bottle of wine that is very obviously poisoned, and in a scene that I actually thought was quite good, Jen privately warns Goth Kid, being very blunt that Agatha is a horrible person and he needs to stop trying to befriend her for his own sake. As everyone besides Goth Kid tries the wine, the countdown starts. And in another scene I kind of like, Goth Kid and Alice have a bonding moment, with Alice explaining her tattoo that she has that wards off curses and her relationship with her family. The group then starts to suffer the effects of the poisoned wine, and despite the fact that it was obviously poisoned, and despite them seeing before that the wine was probably poisoned, everyone is surprised that they've been poisoned. The script just forgets a conversation they had five minutes ago. Jen manages to identify the poison, and the group try and force Agatha to drink the wine that she pretended to drink before, and she refuses, but then Goth Kid says that he will drink it instead, so that makes her decide to do it. Remember, in the previous episodes, Agatha hasn't really given a shit about him, she's mildly curious about the sigil he has on, but that's it. She met him a day ago, but she decides to risk her own life for his for no reason. The group tries to find some ingredients around the house so Jen can brew an antidote, with the women experiencing hallucinations they struggle to overcome. And one of the things that annoys me is how complicated the group is choosing to be when every second counts. Don't say gut of a you social insect, just say honey. Having all your witches come across as old idiots just for goth kid to make a joke really isn't worth it. They see that the house is now underwater and will start flooding when the timer counts down forcing the group to quickly make the antidote, but they don't have time to boil the water. This leads to the only likeable action I've seen Goth Kid do, where he uses his modern day knowledge on technology to find a sous vide and heat the water up. But the antidote is missing a final ingredient, which they remember is the blood of someone who hasn't been poisoned, and so Goth Kid puts some of his blood in it to fix it. How convenient that Goth Kid decided not to drink with them. They make the antidote and then an exit opens in the kitchen just as the water starts to flood the house, escaping back onto the road, and somehow Mrs. Davies is just dead. They try to answer this at the start of next episode, but that just raises even more questions. I think this episode is a bit better than the previous ones. It seems to be a bit more fucked up now that people can actually die, and there's a few small character moments that I liked. However, the script just randomly decides to include things that don't really make a lot of sense, and the dialogue once again is just so grating. It really just erodes so much goodwill that I would have given the show otherwise. On to the next episode episode, Goth Kid digs a grave for Mrs. Davies while Alice reveals that her mother actually died in a motel fire, and she is on the road not to find her, but because she was told that the road would save her. Seems like a very vague reason to risk your life, but let's see how it goes. The rest of the group then have a discussion about whether they need a full coven to complete the road, which you clearly don't because you brought over some random old woman instead of an actual green witch that you would need, but whatever the fuck. And then they say something interesting to Jen. The group says that she 
is responsible for Mrs. Davies's death because, as she drank two glasses of the wine, Jen should have known to give her two shots of the antidote. In which case, if every dose of the poison wasn't cured, how did they pass the trial? Why did the door open when Mrs. Davies only drank one batch of the antidote and still hadn't cured the correct amount of the poison? unless the door to the oven would have just opened automatically when the timer ends, regardless of if they cured themselves or not. In which case, why did it wait until after Mrs. Davies drank the first shot of the antidote before opening, when it should have just opened immediately at zero? Or, if Agatha is correct and only two witches can pass the road, then why didn't it open when everyone else cured themselves? Feels like bollocks to me, but let's continue. After Goth Kid tries to give a cringy speech about friendship and togetherness, Agatha proposes they summon a green witch to help them replace Mrs. Davies, and after doing a spell, Rio is summoned to them, with Agatha once again ignoring ignoring her and the rest of the group struggling to decide if they should be scared of her or not, which I actually thought was a decent joke. They come across another house, and after realising they can't go around it or go a different way, they enter the house, the crew looking around while Agatha and Rio have a private conversation. Something about Agatha owing her bodies and that she could have the rest of the crew once Agatha gets her powers back. Agatha is broadcasting this over the house to turn the rest of the crew against Rio. Goth Kid finds a record that causes them to get cursed and the next trial starts. After making some sigils, aka just drawing a circle on the ground, to protect Jen and Lilia, we see that the record was a song of the witch's road that Alice's mother had made and that she and her mother apparently had been haunted by a curse that exists in her family that attempts to burn them to death. And for some reason, while they're arguing trying to discuss how to pass the trial, the idea to just draw a giant circle around the house so they don't get burned to death and have time to figure things out never comes up. Also, for some reason, Alice immediately blames all of her terrible misgivings in life on the demon, saying that it's the demon's fault that she got fired from all of her jobs jobs and has never been successful in life. Alice, this is a demon that burns you. There is never any mention of it having anything to do with ruining your luck or affecting the physical realm besides occasionally setting you and your family on fire. The idea that it got you fired from your mall job is absolutely absurd, but the idea that women can't be held accountable for any of the shit they bring upon themselves and it has to be handed off to someone else is exactly the kind of thing I've expected from modern day Disney. The group realised that her mother's song is a protection spell. And and that the reason Alice hasn't burnt to death is because someone somewhere is playing her mother's song all the time. Yes, because this very niche song that would only be popular among witchcraft enthusiasts, which was released 50 years ago, would definitely be getting played 24 hours of the day. The group then decide they need to recreate the song so the curse is lifted, and they pass the trial. And so they do that. And for the next few minutes, you have to watch the irritating goth twink and a bunch of wine moms sing a terrible song badly. The demon is banished and the piano opens, although goth kid ends up collapsing and apparently bleeding to death, forcing Jen to make a potion to save him. Agatha is very invested in keeping him alive, despite not really knowing him on a personal level. So it'll be interesting to see why she's doing this. They keep referring to Agatha having a son that she gave up for power and that she keeps having hopes that she might see him again, but if that's what they're trying to use to justify this relationship, they're going to have to try a bit harder for it to make sense, because what happens later doesn't correspond to this justification at all. Also, how the hell do you have a giant gaping wound in your stomach for about 20 minutes, and not only do you not realise, not only does no one else realise, but you don't pass out or experience any other effects from blood loss until right after you pass the trial. There's convenience, and then there's bullshit. We then get a small bonding scene which takes a turn when Rio reveals that she hurt Agatha as part of her job, which is why the two women seem to hate each other. They then look like they're about to be intimate with each other, but the mood is ruined when Rio brings up her son again. Because if I was trying to be intimate with someone, I would definitely keep going on about their most likely deceased child. And then the episode ends, and just when you think the quality might be improving in this show, this episode came along to ensure you that you're setting your expectations way too high, and it just sends them right back down again. Starting with episode 5, we see the Salem 7 hunting Agatha on the road and I could not stop laughing. I get they're trying to track her down, but you don't need them to literally sniff the road and crawl around like dogs for them to try and track her. They're witches. Just use some witch magic. You don't need to do whatever this opening scene was. Also, these seven apparently don't need to do any of the trials in order to progress down the road. My understanding of the previous episode was that you had to follow the road and do the trials, and if you try to go around or turn back, the trial house would appear in front of you, forcing you to do it. But these regular human 
humans that rely purely on instinct and have dedicated themselves into doing nothing but hunting Agatha now have the knowledge and experience to avoid the trials, which is convenient for them because instead of wasting time doing the trials, they can just hunt the group down and make the audience pretend that there's some sort of stakes in this episode. Lilia has a dream that they're coming for them and explains that when Agatha killed her mother and sisters years ago due to the Darkhold, despite Agatha explaining in WandaVision she killed her entire coven, it turns out that she didn't actually kill everyone and that the children of her sisters are the Salem Seven and coming to hunt her. So not only is there a bunch of random children that were previously unmentioned when explaining her backstory in the previous show, not only did the Darkhold not corrupt her to try and take their powers as well when she really should have, but apparently these seven are focused solely on revenge, but somehow haven't tracked her down in several hundred years despite the fact that she is the only purpose they have in life. All of these other witches all seem to know about Agatha and the fact that she has lived in Westview for some time, and the fact that the spell and power she used from the Darkhold to hide herself hasn't been a thing for some time now, and she really should have been tracked down and killed long before the start of the show. Yep, that's the world building around the show's primary villains at the moment, about what you'd expect from this show. As the Salem Seven close in on them, Goth Kid suggests creating brooms to fly away on, and literally everyone says it's a bad idea. No reason is given why it's a bad idea, it's just used for the script to give Lilia some sort of weird rant about how associating brooms with women is sexist and therefore they don't want to use them even though they're in a life or death situation. It's just such a weird message to preach about in your show, especially when you're going to do it anyways. One of the seven tracks them down, and once again instead of just using her magic skills to kill them all instantly, they just push goth kid on the floor and then they get knocked out by a stick. Why are you having the big bads of your show get knocked out by a plank of wood? The group fly up into the sky and goth kid asks them why they haven't been doing this this whole time. And you know what? That's a very good question. Right after this, the group gets forced down from the sky back onto the road, but that doesn't change the fact that they could have just flown around this whole time instead of slowly walking, allowing them to get to the trials much faster and being at less risk of being hunted by the Seven. They could have just flown across the ground instead of wasting time and energy. Let's see if they'll be doing this again despite the obvious benefits and the script itself highlighting how useful it is. One of these Seven stands in front of the final trial, and once again, instead of doing anything useful, it just transforms into a bunch of bugs and then immediately gets bypassed. Very intimidating indeed. In the trial, the group has to use a Ouija board to start the next trial, and for some reason, despite knowing that they can't trick the trials and that time is of the essence, Agatha wastes time pretending she got possessed by Mrs. Davies in a scene I guess is supposed to be comedic. They then start to redo it, and despite the fact that it was pointed out that it was Agatha's trial, and despite the fact that the rules state not to let go of the Ouija board or it could have disastrous results, Agatha is somehow surprised that his spirit doesn't like her, causing her to be shocked and release the board, unleashing a spirit into the room. In case you need me to sum that up for you, Agatha deliberately fucks herself and the group over because of information she is already aware of. Agatha somehow disappears and despite the fact that she's in front of everyone in the middle of a circle, they somehow don't immediately notice she's gone until a second or two later. And I don't know if this is a editing fuck up or not, but there's a very obvious delay between Agatha disappearing and then reacting to her disappearance. Agatha is possessed by the spirit of her mother, who seeks to kill the group for helping Agatha, only for Alice to use her powers on the possessed Agatha, causing Agatha to repel her mother and start to suck the power from Alice, only stopping when Goth Kid reads the name of her son out loud. So yeah, despite knowing what a heartless bitch she is, and despite knowing not to use her powers on her, Alice risks her life and dies like an absolute dumbass. Goth Kid now decides he hates Agatha, and she says that he reminds her of his mother. Jen and Lilia are then mind controlled to throw Agatha into the swamp to be swallowed up, before Goth Kid throws them in as well, now wearing a crown that resembles the one Wanda had when she was the Scarlet Witch. Episode 5 is by far the worst one, things have gone drastically downhill, random contrivances happen that could have been useful in an earlier episode, the bad guys suck, characters are committing acts almost at random, and the dialogue is still just as bad. And while I am slightly curious about Goth Kid, and I enjoy the fact that they're not really trying to redeem Agatha, I feel like it's going to be worse from this point on, especially considering how the creator of this show handled the climax of WandaVision. Thanks for watching lads and lasses, if you enjoyed this video please consider liking, subscribing and checking out some of my other videos. Sharing always helps and if you're feeling really generous please consider my Patreon or YouTube membership. I also have a Twitter and occasionally I do live streams. But most of all I just hope you had a great day and hopefully I will see you in the next video.